speaker. Um, who's this? Hello, um, I'm Michael Wehar. Uh, I'm really excited to be here, so thank you very much for having me. Um, so I work at Swarthmore College, which is a college outside of Philadelphia. Um, I work in their computer science department. And at that college, it's a liberal arts college, so they try to encourage us to collaborate with people doing liberal arts work. Um, so that's how this came about. Um, so I have two students I worked with on this project, uh, Maya and Alyssa. Um, Alyssa is a classical painter. Oh, seems we lost it there. I'm not sure. Oh, it's back on. Uh, Alyssa is a classical painter, but she also codes. Um, and that's how we decided to explore algorithmically generated visual designs. Uh, John is uh, a past student, uh, or really a past student's friend, who works with me on a lot of different projects. And I'm always looking to recruit other tech-related people to join. Okay, so what are some of the motivations for this work? Well, um, one of the goals was to bring together artists and computer scientists to develop a better understanding of drawing processes. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that artists draw or paint, and we wanted to replicate these processes that they do. Um, and we wanted to explore how programming can be used as a tool to generate artworks and things like that. Um, so we had a few questions that were motivating us. Cut out again. I'm not sure. Um, one of the questions what kinds of designs and artworks can algorithms generate? Um, other question is can artworks that we generate, can we actually generate appealing ones? Um, and um, can we improve our drawing processes? When we program our computer to draw things, can we improve those processes based on user feedback? So those were some of the questions we had in mind. So then this is what we actually did. So that motivated us to start this project where we investigated computer algorithms for generating designs and artwork. Um, we mostly just focused on two-dimensional designs um, and we, we created our own algorithms, we created nine of them, and we wrote these in JavaScript, and they're basically procedural processes for drawing shapes and lines on a digital canvas. Um, these processes were inspired by mathematical concepts. Uh, I keep cutting out. I'm not sure if the cable, maybe the cable was stretched. Okay. Um, can I keep going? Or? Uh, just yeah, I guess you can uh, talk for that. Okay, cool. Okay, great. Cool. All right, so there's some mathematical concepts. Um, that um, we're trying to capture with, with our drawings. There's some natural phenomenon. We're trying to replicate that natural phenomenon. Uh, for example, we have spider webs and, oh, it cut out again. That might work. Okay. Um, so we, we have an algorithm to replicate spider webs. We also have an algorithm to replicate trees. And uh, we also have some algorithms that replicate modern art styles. So we'll look at some of these. We actually wrote a blog post on each of the algorithms we implemented. So if you find that something interests you, you can read more. Um, these are published on my blog. All right, so here is the first algorithm we're going to look at. We call it the wrapping paper algorithm. Um, some of the patterns that we generate, we thought they resemble wrapping paper or textile designs. Uh, so that's why we called it wrapping paper. And um, you can specify, there's parameters associated with each algorithm. 
And with those parameters, we can specify what shapes are going to be drawn or what, what rotation we're going to apply to those shapes. And the algorithm does use some randomness to select colors, sizes, opacities. So here are some of the three different images, and we kind of crop them to look like a sheet of wrapping paper. Um, maybe they're a little too dense uh, for you to call them wrapping paper. So we have some more sparse examples as well. So here, again, it's the same algorithm, just with some different parameters. Um, and we create these three different images that we crop in this way. OK, so that was the first algorithm. And we're just going to keep moving. We're going to look at the next algorithm. So the next one we called Vines. Um, there are these digital paint tools online where you drag your mouse across a canvas and it draws some pretty pattern following your mouse's path. So it was partially inspired by that. And we thought it kind of replicated how vines sort of flow along in a different pattern. So um, this algorithm, we, we have different kinds of paths. We have these random paths. And we also have these paths based on trigonometric functions and um, it'll move across can the canvas based on that path. And um, we, we use different opacities and shapes and shape radi radii to, um, to create these images. So here's one of the examples. Um, so in this case, we're basically going in a straight line. And it's just repeating and re over and over. Um, and uh, the line does have a little bit of noise, so it's not perfectly straight. It's jiggling a little bit around. Um, and there's a pattern to how the shapes grow and shrink and get transparent and then more opaque. Um, so that's, that's an example of one of the images we created. Uh, but we have some more images. Using the same algorithm, uh, we have this spiral pattern. Um, so it is really a spiral but then it reflects off when it reaches the boundary of the image, it kind of reflects around the other side. Um, so that's why you see it's like starts out as a spiral and then it kind of reflects around the image. Um, and here we have different shapes and they're changing in their transparency and they're growing and shrinking a little bit and rotating as it moves along the spiral. But it's the same algorithm just with some different parameters. Okay. So, so far we've already seen two. We saw the wrapping paper and we saw the vines, uh, but let's look at this. This is the 70s funk algorithm. Uh, so this one was meant to replicate a real style of modern art. Um, some, some artworks in this style are in modern art galleries. There are some notable artworks within this style and um, we're trying to mimic it. Uh, when we looked at some of these images, we thought, hey, I could maybe paint something like that. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But um, some people have that feeling when they look at uh, certain kind of sim simple looking uh, artworks. So here's one of the images. Uh, we draw these different squares, and then we draw these uh, semicircles or quarter circles at different locations within the squares. And um, when we have certain colors, it, it creates um, somewhat of an appealing design. Uh, so we have another example with this algorithm. Uh, this one uses half circles instead of quarter circles, uh, but it's the same concept. And it's based on the same algorithm. All right, so the next one. I know I'm, I'm initially going to go through several of the algorithms, and you'll look at some of the images, and then I'll talk a bit about how the algorithms kind of work and what the platform is that runs these algorithms and displays the images. So the next one, the spider webs, um, this one, we're, we're trying to replicate 
spider webs in nature. Some people may think they're pretty or attractive or have some unique um, pattern to them. So this algorithm, um, we have these strands and then we have arcs between the strands. And um, within the parameters, you can set the color, the variability of the, of the arc and um, you can specify the order in which the arcs are drawn, things like that. So we end up generating some images like these. Um, well, here are the arcs, and the strands are these kind of straight lines. So here are some examples. So something that seems kind of obvious if, if we're computer programmers, hey, what about fractals? Fractals are pretty cool, interesting looking design. So let's let's try to implement some algorithms that generate fractals. So that's where this algorithm uh, came from. And uh, here are some of the images we could generate. Uh, and these are just using circles and we're filling in um, filling in this two-dimensional canvas uh, with big circles until we can't fill in any more. Then we're filling in with some medium-sized circles and then some small circles and then tiny circles uh, until we fill up as much of the canvas as we can. And there are some different patterns to how we try to fill in, fill in the canvas. And here are some more examples. And these ones are just in black and white, but we have uh, ones in color as well. All right, so this is actually the first algorithm I did. I'm, I know I didn't show it first, but this is one where um, I kind of came up with it and implemented it, uh, the geometric patterns algorithm. Some of the others um, are my collaborators built. Some of them we build in collaboration with each other, um, but this one um, was, was the first one I did. Um, and I just wanted to have it doodle on the canvas, um, but there were some incentives for it to uh, replicate geometric, geometric patterns over and over. So as it's doodling, it might reproduce a certain rectangle or a certain triangle or thing like that over and over. So here, here are some examples of images. Uh, it really is just kind of doodling along, but then there's some incentive to repeat certain triangular patterns over here or certain rectangular patterns over there. Um, and this one over here, to me, it felt like some kind of like circuit design like thing or maybe even a maze kind of kind of resembled that. Um, but this the same algorithm, just with different parameters, um, it, it looks very different. And here are four other images uh, just showing there's some more variation. Same algorithm, just different parameters. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the last three algorithms, but I, I will just show you a couple of the images. Um, so this one, the overlapping tiles algorithm, here's some of the images we generated. And uh, this one, this is based on Conway's Game of Life, and we generated some interesting images as well. And uh, here's the trees algorithm. Um, so over here, uh, we use brown and green to try and look like a tree, kind of. It kind of looks like a little bit too perfect or too uniform. Uh, but then over here on the left, um, we use all different kinds of colors to create some uh, fake artificial looking tree. I'm sorry. It's them off. Okay. All right. Sorry, I had to jump around there for a sec. Okay, so what was our software? Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about how we did this. Uh, and right now, this is still a work in progress, and I'm open to any of your feedback or any ideas you might have. 
But right now we kind of broke up the project into three different parts. Uh, one part is the drawing program itself. Uh, this runs in a web browser and you can actually interact with it as it's drawing an image. Um, and then the other part of this is the data set builder. So we actually are generating a data set of these images and we're going to show them to people we already are and getting feedback about these images to better understand um, how the process affects the perception of the images. Um, so we're generating the data set and then we also have a tool where people can review the images in the data set. So those are the three different things we have. Uh, so what's the drawing program? So um, I'm calling it a framework for designing drawing algorithms. Uh, so if you want to try out to build your own drawing algorithm, you can use our framework and you can write in JavaScript using HTML canvas, you can write your own algorithm. And I would love to see it. Um, I would collaborate with you if you're interested. And uh, the algorithm, we have tools built so you could run it and it would display the images. Um, basic things you would need is, uh, you would need to describe how you initialize um, the image you're gonna create and, and your drawing program. Uh, you have to specify what it does when you start drawing, what it does when you pause drawing, what it means to reset your drawing program, and you need you need to break up your drawing process into individual steps. So we have this draw one step function. Um, so literally every little piece of your drawing um, is its own unique kind of unit. All right, so let's take a look at the drawing program. All right, so this is the drawing program. I'm not gonna claim it, it's beautiful or anything like that. It's what we got right now. Um, but you can select from different algorithms and you can click start. And it starts drawing. starts drawing your image. Okay. And you can see the progress. Uh, I set it on a slow speed right now, so you can actually see it happening. I can pause it, I can start again, I can reset it, I can clear the canvas. All right. We can try another algorithm. Let's try the spider webs. So here it's drawing a spider web. And let's try two more. Let's try the trees. It's drawing our tree, it's expanding out. And just one more, let's do the, the circles. Okay, so this is the fractal algorithm. So it's filling the canvas in a certain pattern with circles. Actually, I am gonna do one more. Show you. The game of life one's fun to watch, so let's let's try that out. So this is fun to watch. Okay. So that's the drawing program. Uh, the drawing program you can find it on GitHub. It's here. Um, if you want to add more features to it, go right ahead. Um, I would love to see a pull request or um, any, anyone submitting issues, that would be great. We currently don't support in real time adjusting parameters. Uh, so every algorithm has its own params file that's loaded when the web app starts. Um, but we'd like to add that as a feature. Okay, and there's a whole readme that describes how this works and shows examples, and it shows the blog articles and everything. Okay. So 
let's keep going. So that's the drawing program. That's just one part of this. We also have this data set builder program. Um, so what you just saw, the drawing program, initially when we started this project, we needed to see real-time feedback because we would adjust our algorithm and we'd want to run it and see how it's drawing. Um, so, so it actually, the code ran in the web browser. Uh, but later we realized, hey, we can't run this a million times in a web browser to generate a million images. So uh, we actually, our same, the same code we wrote for our algorithms, we were actually able to build out a Node.js application that would read in that JavaScript code and in the same exact way run our algorithms just in a more efficient manner. Um, and it would generate, it would run as like a job where you, it would generate a thousand images, uh, maybe over a half hour or so. Oh, and also it can generate high resolution images as well. Uh, any of the images we currently generate um, can easily be scaled to an arbitrary resolution with keeping, while keeping uh, the crisp and clearness of it. So let me just show you some example images. So this is one part of the data set. We have a ton of these 600 by 600 pixel images. Um, but as I said, you can blow them up as large as you like. And I'm just going to click through so you can see a few of them. So these, this is the spider webs algorithm. Some of them didn't turn out so nice, and some of them turned out great. Let's see, there was one I really liked here. Oh, uh, yeah, I like this one. But anyway, everyone can pick out their favorite. OK, so the third part was there's actually an application you can go to. Um, I'm not sharing it with a lot of people, but you can you can go to it if you like. It's on a sort of testing server right now. Um, I am going to deploy it on a much better server shortly, maybe in a few weeks. Uh, but if you want to test it out, you can go to my website slash artwork, um, and you can you can start reviewing images. Uh, we also have a Google form where if you want to be assigned tasks that will help us in reviewing images please do sign up. And I can share this info with everyone afterwards as well. But, but let me just go to the reviewer website. And at, on this website, you'll compare pairs of images. Um, we also have a version where there's, it's sort of like a tournament. There is a tournament version where you compare images and images get eliminated. Um, but I haven't made that available on the website yet. We'll probably have a few different ways of reviewing images, and we'll try to figure out what what works the best. Um, okay, and based on your reviews, we'll learn about how preference is related to the parameterizations of the algorithms. So here's the website. Um, again, you can go to michaelwehar.com slash artwork, and it has links to all the repos and everything. Uh, and this is semi-private right now, but um, you all have, you could access it if you like. So you can look how it's generating an image. So it actually generated a, a GIF, and it's, it's showing you the GIF when you hover over it. So it shows you how it was created, and then you can select, select your favorite. So who votes for that image over there on your left? Does anyone vote for that one? Okay. Who votes for the image on your right? A couple more. Okay. So let's defer that. Um, and then you can keep selecting. I'm just going to skip through, um, but you can... You can see there's a lot of different images. It's the same algorithm, but there's a lot of variation. Um, and it's loading very slowly because, as I said, it's on a test server right now. 
Um, but we've already recorded about 7,000 um, reviews or selections from different people. And you can select from six different algorithms right now. We haven't incorporated all of them, um, but if you go to down here, you can select a different one, such as spider webs, and you'll see some of the different images for that algorithm. All right. So if anyone's interested in pulling that up, that's the URL, and I'll, I'll share it afterwards. So those are the three, those are the three different components of our project. Maybe we'll integrate it all together into like a single platform that we make public and we, we try to get more people involved. Um, that's something that might be in our future. Um, but right now, uh, here's what you could contribute to. If any of you are interested in collaborating, um, I think art. There's a lot of different opinions about art. What's what's considered beautiful, what, what's considered ugly, or what, it's not just about what's beautiful or ugly, it could, there could be other emotional responses or interests in art, and there's a lot of different opinions, so I, I would love to incorporate more people to develop new algorithms and give us feedback. Uh, so these are the different things you could contribute to if you wanted, you could implement a new algorithm. One person, it took them two hours they implemented a new algorithm and deployed it to our platform. Uh, there's another person it took them a month. So um, they, it can vary, it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, you could also sign up as a reviewer or you could submit issues or pull requests to our open source project. So um, if you wanted to implement your own algorithm, um, there's some example algorithms in the GitHub re repo, so let's just take a look at that. Um, so this algorithm is just meant to be very simple, um, just to show you what, what our framework looks like. Um, and you might say, hey, I don't like this framework, and you can give us that feedback, and we'd be excited to hear that. Um, so currently, you create a dictionary, which your dictionary acts like the algorithm. And you add these different functions to the dictionary. And there's a couple that are important. You need a reset function, an initialize function, pause, and start. Again, this is JavaScript code here. Um, and this algorithm just draws some dots on a canvas. And you can see draw one step, which, which draws a single dot. Um, that's, that's how it's written. And if, if you write your algorithm in this way, uh, you can add it to any of our existing tools for generating 1,000 images with our data set or deploying it into um, into our web apps um, so that you can run it within the web app or you can uh, add those the images you generate with the data set to our reviewer web app. Um, so this is our, our um, format for creating our algorithms so that it's compatible with our existing systems. Um, but we have two more complex algorithms here. The Geometric, oh, the geometric patterns algorithm right here, ALGP. Uh, and there's also the vines algorithm, ALG vines. And you can look at those if you like to see how we did that. So that's one way you could contribute. Another is you could review images. Um, so I have a group of people who we do this assignment where we give them 10 minutes to select their, their favorites among the image pairs we give them. 
and then they provide us, they fill out a form basically providing us with their feedback about how we can improve the reviewing process. We're really just at the beginning stages of this, um, but if, if you're interested, there's a Google form where you can sign up to be a reviewer, or you can just go to the website and review images as well. Um, and you can, you can always submit an issue or pull request on our repo if you like, or you could, you could improve our drawing web interface if you, if you have ideas. All right, well, thank you very much. All right, does anyone have any questions or maybe an idea for a new type of algorithm? We should implement. Yeah. No, I, I think it's one of the standard Google Slides images. Yeah, one of, one of my collaborators selected it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me show you that. That might be interesting. Um, so we would like to, based on feedback, select parameters based on like how the user selected what images they prefer, have some automated way of improving. But uh, right now we did two things. We have a params file associated with every algorithm. Well, you can see there's all different parameters that you can manually, you can hard code. Um, but we also have our data set builder application, which runs in Node.js. It actually, uh, sorry, I'm just, for each algorithm, we can specify how we want to randomize parameters in some kind of complex way um, and this creates a lot of different varying images. Uh, we would like to not have this all hard-coded so it's kind of like the artist who created the algorithm yeah. uh, hard codes it and then comes up with how they want to randomize parameters and our data set builder generates thousands of images based on the randomization of those parameters. But we would like to learn people's preferences and automatically explore the parameterization space. Can you talk about um, like selecting parameters from the behavioral data like mm. we're talking like um, so like thinking of rainfall in September and sending like you know some radius I think that's a neat idea. One thing we did think about, which is kind of related, is we can apply existing image analyses, algorithms, or, um, or tests to the images we generate. And if it passes those tests, we like those parameters. If it doesn't pass those tests, we don't like those parameters. And we can have some incremental adjusting. Um, so um, for example, there might be too much white space. If there's too much blank space, then maybe that's a bad artwork. That's not entirely true because there's some images we generated where um, blank space is really ugly and there's some images we generated where blank space kind of is good because you can really focus on the interesting pattern and not be distracted or overwhelmed but but things like that we could just check how much blank space is there and uh, adjust parameters based on that anyone else have any have any patterns you might encounter or think about that we should replicate. So the one I want to do is rainwater. 
um, raindrops or or even like an ocean wave. It's something we would love to do. I don't know how to do it yet, but. Well, if you ever think of anything, let me know. All right. Yeah? So, in your analysis of, of the review, that can be considered it's going to be based on the parameter values. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about doing like, um, like visual recognition, like machine learning? Because, like, one of the things I noticed was that, like, some of those, even though they're generated by different algorithms, actually end up working. Like they'll they'll have at least like somewhat similar features in it, you know. And so, like like I I think you could see like given enough like random variation through the different algorithms coming up with something, the human might go, oh, those look similar. So I I would like to do machine learning to learn parameterizations, um, but I like the idea of the artist designing the process. Um, but actually, you brought up a good point, something I didn't show. Um, we do have a very much work in progress web page that shows ranking information of images. So I can show you some of the high ranking images um, that, that are on the website currently. Up. I'm sorry, I don't know why it just keeps cutting out. But here's one of them. Here's another. Here's another. These are some of the higher ranking images based on the review re reviews we've gotten thus far. And there's some images I looked at and I was like, this seems like really boring or uninteresting, yet some of them got high rankings. There's also some where I was like, wow, that's really unique, and they got high rankings as well. So it's um, I think every person has their own kind of preferences, um, and that's why we're going to try out different ways to record feedback from users. But currently, we're focused on this select select your favorite model. All right. Well, thank you very much. So, um, um, maybe quick overview, just a little bit more. All right. So, um, Code and Supply is really trying to get people to think a lot more about art uh, and, and algorithmically generated art, all kinds of computer generated art. Um, one of the projects that um, we started to, um, I don't know, fund in a certain way or be involved in a certain way was an art project that was going to be displayed at PyCon in 2020. Yeah. And um, that was, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> PyCon 2020 didn't happen in person, you know, didn't, I don't think it really happened at all. Um, but um, we still want to bring back that, um, that effort, that program. And um, so we have uh, a number of TVs that we're willing to uh, put towards the thing. What we want to do is create someplace in this space. Um, basically an art wall that is comprised of TVs um, changing out various um, user-generated art of, of computer of computer art um, preferably algorithmically generated um, not just like oh I did this in Photoshop um, and uh, make a moving art exhibit of it such that we can move it around take it to various things that are going on in, in Pittsburgh not just always here um, we got a generous donation from um, uh, Framework, the laptop company gave us one of their main boards, um, and we got some um, memory and some storage from other people, and we want to make this a reality sometime next year. So this is an exact um, like what we want to have available for that project, um, so that we can show the, the crazy art that people are doing, the cool programming that people are doing in our community. So, one of my motivations for having Michael speak tonight was exactly um, to, to drive people towards that and say, hey, this is going to be a thing. Um, so we hope that uh, those of you who 
are interested in this will submit something to it or, or vote on things that we're gonna that we're gonna put up whenever it gets to that point. Um, yeah, cool. Cool. Thank you very much for speaking. Lovely to have you. Lovely to meet you in person. It's been a while. I don't think we've met in person. If if, it, if we have, it's been a while. It's been every four years. We might have met yeah. a while back. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's great to it's great to have him back. Um, and that's all we got for tonight. Um, I'm gonna go cut off the stream, and uh, you folks can feel free to to chat a little bit, um, probably for about 15 minutes or so. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thank you.